Welcome everybody to this edition of Operation American Dream. Have you ever wondered how you can transition from the military into being an entrepreneur? Well, coming up, we've got Kai Jackson who's going to talk about that. Then I've got Caitlin Sten with the UTC branch of Synergy One Lending to talk about business for purpose and how veterans should own homes. And if you're looking for a veteran-friendly university, I've got Chad Lozier from Point Loma Nazarene University to come to talk about their incredible organization. And then finally, we're going to wrap up with some questions that you might have about how do you really transition, resume writing, interviewing skills, how do I network? So stay tuned. We'll be right back to get Operation American Dream kicked off. Stick around. Welcome back to Operation American Dream. I'm Eve Nasby, and with us in studio this morning is one of my good friends, Kai Jackson. Kai, welcome to the show. Thank you, Eve. Kai, you know, I love your story. You're a veteran, you had a, a transition, and you've got a story about that, but you've also become an entrepreneur. So we're going to talk about all of those phases. But first, I want to jump into who you were as a veteran, as a military person. So talk about your service. Outstanding. Um, I was a Marine Corps officer, was a helicopter pilot, and also flew fixed wing in the Marine Corps for almost 20 years. Wow. Uh, born and raised here in Southern California in Los Angeles and have managed to stay in the local area. And so was that hard for you, fixed wing and rotor wing? Is that a challenge? I think it was, you know, yeah. because you fly them very differently, almost uh, 180 degrees out. Right. And then in the middle of your career, you transitioned to becoming like a liaison with our political figures. Is that right? I did. Talk about that. About halfway through my career, I went up to Washington, D.C. to become the Marine Corps Deputy Director of Federal Legislative Affairs to the U.S. House of Representatives. Wow. In that role, I represented the Commandant of the Marine Corps and the interests of the United States Marine Corps to the Senate, to the House of Representatives, all around the world. It was a very fascinating and non-standard uh, career track. Yeah, I guess so. Right. So you've got this, this multiplicity of gifts, of skills, of talents, and you've proven yourself to walk into any situation and succeed, like fixed wing, rotor wing, you know, going in front of a Congress. Now, how did that translate for you once you got out of the military? That's a good question. It uh, really gave me the ability to interact with people. So when I was a pilot in the Marine Corps, mm -hmm. I was probably an uh, average pilot. You know, no one will ever remember Kai Jackson, the pilot. <laughs> but what I did learn was that I had skills and I really loved people. Mm -hmm. I loved harmonizing people. I loved solving problems. And I took those leadership skills and brought them into the civilian sector. Mm -hmm. So was your transition easy, hard? And our viewers are probably in transition or they know somebody who's in transition. So talk about the you personally in process? You know, for me, it was uh, a little bit difficult, a little bit difficult. Um, I left the Marine Corps a little bit earlier than expected. And when I, when I made that transition, though, I thought I had it all wired. I mm. said, hey, here I am. I've been all around the world. I've met with heads of state. Um, I have this nailed. Um, so while I did go into a job fairly quickly, um, Progressing and beginning to expand my small business didn't come as easily as I, as I thought. So I made one of the most rookie mistakes there was. I started putting applications into the mm. black hole of death. And <laughs> that can be demoralizing, as you know. It can be. You know, you've got all these companies that say, hey, Kai, if you want to work with us, put your application in online, and they never look at it. And now you feel like you're being rejected by hundreds of companies when, in fact, this machine is not recognizing your skills or anything like that. So it's really a difficult transition, I think, in that respect. Yes. But I think one of the things that veterans excel at is becoming entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And so that's mm -hmm. what you've done. You're kind of a good case study for us because you're both working a full-time job and you're venturing out as an entrepreneur. So tell us about your company. Absolutely. Jackson Strategy Group is a company that uh, started this year, 2016, and it is a uh, small uh, business, veterans owned, uh, full service government affairs company. Mm. Um, what we excel at is harmonizing uh, and bringing disparate uh, 
stakeholders together um, to the benefit of our clients' uh, interests and their missions so and goals. Who would be your ideal client? So our ideal client could be a non-government organization, could be a public uh, firm, could be a, a local municipality that's looking to work with uh, the military, defense industry, or the U.S. Congress. Given my history with uh, the, the Marine Corps and the Department of Defense, um, we excel at ensuring we create a shared understanding between our client uh, and the military, for example. And I love that because there's so many civilian-owned companies in San Diego who would love to do business with the military, but they don't know how. Right. So you create that roadmap, you're kind of their GPS, right. to navigate the waters of doing business within the military community here in San Diego and right. throughout the nation. Right, exactly. You know, sometimes just working and understanding the language of the military and on top of that, navigating the congressional system, the legislative system, right. can be exhausting. Right. And we like to take that burden off of off of our companies and, and make it a lot more navigatable. So give us, as we wrap up here, give us some secrets to your success. We talked about um, you having a mentor and how important that was to you. So give us a little hints of how to be successful as an entrepreneur and, a, and obviously a veteran. Right. So I do have a mentor, Brigadier General uh, Jason Bohm, who's back in Washington, D.C. And, and a long time ago, he gave me some advice. He said, Kai, don't wrestle with a pig because you both get dirty <laughs> And the pig doesn't learn anything, <laughs> you know. And so I used to find myself with these these very difficult problem sets, and we would debate, and it would just be intractable. And he said, "Kai, take a step back. Mm -hmm. Remember when you were a second lieutenant or a captain, and what you do is you look at the problem set, you figure out what the situation is, you define your intent, your mission, and every day that you wake up, you put one foot in front of the other mm -hmm. to solve that problem." And I think a lot of times when my clients are having issues with the federal government or with the military, um, they, they get so caught up in the bureaucracy when really what you do is just define what the problem set is and, and you look to bring people together to harmonize the situation. Thank you for becoming a part of our show. I love what you do and I think it's extremely valuable for our companies here in San Diego to partner with you. So thanks again for being here and thank you for your service. Thank you, Eve. I appreciate it. We will be right back with more Operation American Dream. Don't go away. Back to Operation American Dream. I have a great guest in with us now. Caitlin Sten is a loan officer with the UTC branch of Synergy One Lending. And what I love about not just Caitlin, but the UTC branch is that they don't just kind of run a business, right? You, right. You're very involved with purpose, like purpose in your community, uh, purpose, uh, you know, the concept of business for purpose. So elaborate on that. Absolutely. Yeah, so we are running as a for-purpose branch. Um, you know, it's very meaningful and very, um, it's, it's wonderful to be able to help people get a, get a loan, whether it's their first home or, you know, second, third, whatever. Um, it's very gratifying to help them with that process. Help families get into their homes. Absolutely. Um, but to then also be able to add that extra value and through that purchase, create a donation um, towards a nonprofit and help out the community, it's, it feels that much better. And so, it's great. All parties involved just love it. So you're very much taking a, a process that is, that, that is a useful process anyways, housing, yep. uh, in this case, in a lot of cases, right, veterans, you guys kind of specialize in the veterans yep. market. And, and you're also taking some of those proceeds and give it back. So you're talking about the um, Buy a Home, Save a Vet program. Yes. So give us, a, give us some background on Buy a Home, Save a Vet. So Buy a Home, Save a Vet is a program through which uh, a purchase transaction, it doesn't have to only be VA loans. Mm -hmm. It can happen on any purchase. Um, there is a donation that is generated on behalf of the borrower. And the borrower gets to go through and vet out 
uh, military nonprofits that we support through the program. And all of these nonprofits help treat and support veterans for free or at least very low cost. Um, veterans that are suffering from PTSD, traumatic brain injury, um, and they all treat them in very different ways, different modalities, which is great because it's, it's an alternative to just going to the VA or you know, talk therapy, getting medication. Um, and the borrower gets to read up on these nonprofits, check them out. Yeah, and learn about them anyways, right? Yeah, and, um, and then tell us where they'd like that donation to go to. So what are some of the charities that are involved with, uh, with uh, I mean, what, what, what are the, some of the charities that, that are on your list of kind of preferred charities? So we've got uh, the uh, Warrior Angels Foundation, uh, Irreverent Warriors, um, we've got uh, the Wave Academy. Um, we have two new ones, Canine Companions for Veterans, mm -hmm. which is um, great. We've, we, they actually just sent us a picture of one of their newest dogs. Mm -hmm. So adorable. Um, and then we've got All Eagles Oscar. Yeah, and so, so, what, so in essence, what you've got is a situation <laughs> where people can buy a home uh, and then a portion of their of their uh, the proceeds from the real estate agent or from mm -hmm. the from the lender in your office kind of goes into one of these charities and donates to one of these charities. Yep. How, from from your standpoint, what what um, what developed kind of the passion for the military in your life? Well, so Cindy Alvarado, my branch manager, created this program, and I was just so drawn to it because I come from a military family. Mm -hmm. My father was a former NCIS. Um, he retired out as a captain, uh, Navy intel officer. Um, my sister is a Navy intel officer. My brother-in-law is a Navy SEAL. Um, and my mom was an operations research analyst for the Department of Defense. So she was constantly um, working with the, with the military and the government as well. So I, was, I moved around a lot as a child, lived um, on base. Um, so I, I have so many friends that are also um, in the military, so it just, I, it's great to be able to um, give back to them. And what better a place in San Diego to, oh to do that, right? I mean, you've got 250,000 uh, veterans, 100,000 active duty and growing all the time. So let's talk about kind of what, what you do. So, so when you talk about veteran home ownership, the real big asset that you have is the VA loan, right? So, oh, yeah. so that's kind of what you guys focus on. What are the big benefits in buying a home for a veteran with the VA loan? What do they have at their disposal? Well, first, there's no down payment mm -hmm. required. Um, we, there's no mortgage insurance. Um, you know, the, a veteran, many veterans come to the table with no funds uh, really required and they have, they have a home right there. So, so in essence, so some of the risk that would be associated with like putting money down and saving mm -hmm. up for, for a down payment, the, the government kind of uh, covers that, that right. risk for them. Um, and why, I mean, why is veteran home ownership? I mean, don't you, what, what are your thoughts around veteran home ownership itself? Well. I mean, if you've, if you've served your country, I mean, it, it, who, who more than the veteran community deserves? Oh, absolutely. That, right? I, it's a fantastic benefit to them, and they deserve it. And I don't think, uh, I mean, I don't know that the, um, that the military itself does a good enough job for, of, of getting that, those benefits out. No, they don't. Oftentimes, you know, we'll get first-time home buyers who are veterans and they have no idea, you know, what all is included. Um, and even just the fact that, you know, with a VA loan, yes, it has to be a primary residence, but you can finance up to four units with it. Or, um, you know, we can bring that loan up to a million dollars. Um, that does require a bit of a down payment, mm -hmm. but it is possible. Um, so. A lot of people don't know everything that's available. So it all boils down to education, right? Oh yeah. And so when, uh, so if you have questions about the VA loan, if you want to use a VA loan, and if you want to um, take the VA loan and buy a home, and then also help contribute to it can yeah. help save a vet. If you want to buy a home, save a vet, as the name implies. Um, re make sure you reach out to Caitlin, get your education, utilize the VA home loan, become a, a, a homeowner. Uh, thanks so much for coming in, Caitlin. I really, really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back with more Operation American Dream. We're in studio this morning with my good friend, Chad Lozier from Point Loma Nazarene University. Chad, welcome. Hi, thank you. 
Thanks now, for having me. You are the Director of Military Programs and Services over at Point Loma NAS. Tell us yes. what that means, because you guys are obviously very passionate in this military community in attracting veterans to the university. So tell us a little bit about you and your role. Okay, well, uh, basically one of the biggest things that I do is just make sure that the university is really well connected within the military community. I mean, obviously, we're one of the biggest veteran uh, cities in the, in the country. We have we such a big military hub here. And um, we just have to connect um, with, the, with the communities in many ways. So that's a lot of what I do. I um, go out there and I talk to veterans and military about the university and help them kind of navigate where they want to go to college and what they want to study. And, and really, it's, it's kind of looking forward to like the next career piece and how we can be the bridge to, to get them there. And you know what, Chad, that is so difficult. I talk to so many veterans who are getting out and they honestly don't know what they want to yeah. do next. And they almost need a, a guide to, to say, okay, look, here are your strengths, here are your weaknesses, let's focus on your strengths. How do you guys do that? Are you meeting with them one on one in like counseling situations, or what does that look like? Yeah, that's that's a really good question. Well, I mean, uh, in San Diego, especially, the universities are really kind of taking up part of that transition piece. I mean, we're 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 picking up the baton in many ways because a lot of veterans, as they transition, they're they're electing to go to college first and kind of. Um, maybe go into career later, mm -hmm. or they're figuring it out kind of on the fly. And so, yeah, we do um, we do try to do a lot to help steer them in the right direction, get them connected with um, employers and community members so that they actually have a good idea of what is what is out there and what they're capable of, of achieving um, as, they ex as they come into mm -hmm. the university and then exit uh, with their degree. And it's so important to have that because I know some folks will just kind of sit on their GI Bill and kind of ride that through. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they're left with nothing. And so I think your advice to them would be, come see me, let's talk. But Absolutely. I think your advice is also to be choosy about Absolutely. the university. So talk about that. Yeah, well, that is that is a big uh, that is a big key. I, I do always recommend that if you're leaving the military that you look at choosing your college as, as you would a consumer. You know, uh, you know if you were going to go shop for a car, you want to test drive a couple. You want to look at, um, at everything that there is to offer. I don't think that there's anything different with choosing a college or choosing your higher education path. You want to ask good questions. You want to know um, how do they support their veterans. Mm -hmm. they they want to know, um, you want to know as a, as a consumer, um, do you connect me with employers? Do you have a mentorship program so that I can, um, you know, be helped along the way? Um, is the degree that I'm, that I'm going to be enrolling in, is it going to help me get to not just the first job outside of college, but is it going to help me get promoted as mm -hmm. well? So um, that's why I always say, you know, ask good questions. Um, don't just take necessarily the first opinion that comes your way, but really look at colleges like, um, I mean, it's a big it's a big step in your life and it, and it should be a really sound decision. And I'm, su I'm sure also you would advise to make sure the school is accredited with a big mm -hmm. fiasco with ITT. Yes. Those students by the tens of thousands are now left with literally nothing. Yeah. And they can come to you, but they have to start all over again. And not just accredited. I mean, accredited is definitely a very, a very big, um, piece of the puzzle and you want to know that, especially it's definitely in the news. So you definitely right. want to know that they're accredited, but also right. beyond that, what's the reputation of the university? Mm -hmm. Is it a university that um, has a good graduation rate, good retention rates? Is it a university that is connected in the local community? Do they, um, do they have employers that pull resumes from that university off the top. I mean, so there's there's a lot more that goes into it, too. Accreditation is definitely a big factor, but also look at the reputation, too. Now, you are a veteran, so tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about your military career. Yeah, so I spent um, the good majority of my naval service here in San Diego. Um, I'm from Portland, Oregon originally, but um, we just love the weather so much, mm -hmm. we just chose not to leave. Um, and uh, as soon as I got out of the Navy, I mean, I, I, I would say my transition story was, was a successful one. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to college right away. I decided to go um, kind of into the industry, into uh, higher education. Um, but I realized very quickly after that I need, I need to go back to school. So I got a master's degree um, and then followed that up. And I'm working on a doctor of education. Wow. Uh, at, at this Excellent. point, but and all that, honestly, I, I can say is um, uh, in, in large part due to the post 9-11 GI Bill and having VA benefits and, and kind of getting a good transition. 
you're kind of the poster child too, because <laughs> you're, you're transitioning out of the military. You've got the bill. You're also a brand new dad. I think yes. your son is seven yep. weeks old. Seven weeks today. So you're yep. not sleeping. <laughs> you've got a full-time job, and you're doing schoolwork for your PhD. Yeah. And I think that's one of the characteristics, obviously, of our military. Yeah, and, and I, I say that a lot. I mean, that's that's kind of what we do, you know. As, I mean, I can speak for the Navy specifically, but I think in the military as well. Is we're used to taking on collateral duties. We're used to having two or three or four jobs at the same time. So um, when I, you know, while I have my full time job, my my the major hat that I wear, I I do also now wear the dad hat, and I also wear the full-time student hat, and I, I teach at the university as well. And, and I think that that's just kind of the Navy way, is we, we always, you know, where can I be of the most help? Mm -hmm. And we volunteer for a lot of things. Um, right. But that's that's also one one uh, piece of advice that I give to my transitioning military, and that's what's gonna set them apart as they go into the workforce, is they're, they're gonna take on a lot, and mm -hmm. it shows. It shows up to the bosses and helps them get promoted pretty quickly. And they do. Studies have shown they get promoted twice as fast. Yes. So, I mean, I think the proof is in the pudding. And again, thank you for all that you're doing. Now, when you go to Point Loma as a, a person from the military, mm -hmm. what is waiting for them? Obviously, you've got career transition assistance, you've got um, guides there, but how do you make sure these veterans feel warm and welcome when they get on your campus? Well, the first, I mean, we're, we are in touch with them, not only through the whole recruiting process, but you know, from, from day one when they're on campus, that they, they should know about our office, our military program office. Um, we show up to orientation and we kind of let them know, here's the lay of the land, here's what's gonna make you successful in school. Um, what we love Point Loma. I mean, we think it's a, a great school. There's many, many different um, majors to choose from, and and great resources on campus. But a lot of times, they they just need to um, know that somebody's looking after them, and that they can um, be led in the right direction. Right. I think that's so important too. And you guys also have classes that you teach to help companies understand how to hire those veterans because yes. they are such an important part of our community in the civilian workforce. And so I know you guys have on November 3rd, mm -hmm. right in your location in Mission Valley, the Certified Military Recruiter Program, yes. where companies can actually send their recruiters to you and you will teach them through Matt Brogdon, one of the subject matter experts, how to hire the right veteran for their job. So I think I thank you for that yeah, class as well. You're welcome. Excellent. Well, Chad Lozier from Point Loma Nazarene University, thank you for being a part of Operation thank America. Thank Dreams. you for having me. It's been My wonderful. pleasure. We will be right back with more Operation American Dream, and you can always connect with us on OperationAmericanDream.tv. All right, in the real estate recon segment this week, I've got a good friend of mine, Christopher Paul with Big Block Realty, to uh, talk to us a little bit about the market, a little bit about some of the opportunities that exist for our military and veterans in uh, San Diego. Um, you're in Escondido mainly, right? Right. That's yeah. kind of the main area that you're in, but you've also uh, got an opportunity up uh, in uh, Riverside County. Right, right. You know, my main territory is in, uh, in North County from the coast through Riverside, or through uh, Escondido and Ramona, but I, um, I do sell quite a bit up in uh, Riverside County as well. I mean, there's a lot of people, even from like the naval bases that go all the way up to Riverside County. Right. Temecula is almost like a military town, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I've sold a lot up there and, you know, part of it is affordability and what you get bang for the buck. You know, if it's the difference between a condo in San Diego County and and a, and a big new newer house with a yard um, in Riverside County, sometimes that's a great choice. What questions are you getting in, in your market in Escondido from buyers or sellers? Or what, what do you have going on? You know, it's a great question. One of the things that I get over and over, and especially this time of year, is, you know, it's, it's, it's getting to be into the winter months here, the fourth quarter. Should I buy a house at this time or should I sell my house? Should I wait mm. till spring? Mm. Uh, the other variation of that this year is there's an election going on. Mm -hmm. Should I buy or sell during an election? Sure. And my take on that is in San Diego County, we really are a four season market. Mm -hmm. It's not like some of my friends in Minnesota who, you know, you've got a, you can't even find the houses in the wintertime, they're buried in the snow, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, we really are active all four seasons. We do slow down a bit in terms of volume during these months here. But really it is, it's just a matter of there not being as much inventory. So the homes that are going on the market are selling. Well, the, other, the, other, the other thing to consider, right, is that at this point in time, we're at a relatively low interest rate environment. So you may wait and you may, you know, uh, you know but you may not get the, get the amount of, uh, of value that you would uh, for, for buying sooner than later. 
I think so too, and I think as a buyer, it's really wise to be, this is an opportunity to be a contrarian to where you can just, if people are sitting on the fence and thinking they can wait till spring, if you buy now and take advantage of low interest rates, take advantage of people that are vacillating because of a presidential election, mm -hmm. and I think there's a good chance you get opportunities you wouldn't otherwise get. Well, awesome advice as always. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Operation American Dream. I'm your host, Eve Nasby, and this is one of my most favorite parts of the show because these are questions that you, the viewers, have written into us on our website about things that you're questioning. Maybe resume writing skills and employment, maybe financial literacy, you're getting out of the military and now what do you do um, with budgets and things like that. You are looking at home ownership, which is a great thing. How do you use your VA loan? And entrepreneurship, most veterans I know are great entrepreneurs. So this is the segment where we've got subject matter experts that are going to answer your questions and please, Keep sending them, because I know you're going to love this segment. Don't go away. Welcome to our Q&A segment of Operation American Dream with Paul Falcone, HR guru, nationally syndicated author. Paul, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Eve. Love being here. We have another great question from our viewers, and that is, what can transitioning veterans do to speed up the job finding process. Wait, oh, it's a trick. It's a trick. It's when, hard. When you think of people transitioning, think for a minute of someone coming out of college, but they don't, you know, they studied history, they're not sure what they want to do. Or think of someone who's mid-career, they have an MBA and a CPA mm -hmm. in accounting, but they want to get into marketing. You know, these things take wow. time. It is, it's yep, different. And that happens. Yeah, and it happens, it's true, it's a reality. So what I would think is, use your resources the best you can. There are a lot of resources out there, organizations that will help prep you and, and train you and do those kinds of things. And I find sometimes there's so much out there that they get a little overwhelmed and they don't take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'd say is you should buy a book because a book will kind of speed you up in terms of what the employer is expecting a lot of times. And I do think you have to practice it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But there's research to be done on a company before you go in. There's something that I call a um, uh, candidate desire factor. Mm. And when I ask someone, tell me what you know about our organization, I would expect them to at least have a top line answer. They shouldn't be asking me questions about, so Mr. Employer, tell me about your company. What do right. I need to know? Right. That's like, you didn't do any homework on the internet right. before you came in? So yeah, you want that combination of use your resources, be comfortable in the interview process, have a couple of questions prepared, mm -hmm. two or three, no more than that, when the time comes for them to ask you. And again, research that marketplace and see, find the companies that are veteran friendly, and those are the ones you should focus in on. Now, I think there's also another great strategy that if you go on LinkedIn, and you have somebody that you're connected to that works at that company, can you just pick up the phone and call them and say, okay, Tell me what Paul Falcone's really like and what's this company really like? Get yeah, the inside scoop? Absolutely. You just reach out to him on LinkedIn and say, I'm really interested and I want to follow the company, but do you have any thoughts and what I can do? And the person will usually say, look on our website and if you see anything that you're interested in, be sure and let me know and I'll be happy to, you know, present you to him. Excellent. So, quick Paul Falcone. Network. Thank you so much again, Paul Falcone. Well, this is it for our Q&A session for Operation American Dreams. Stay tuned for more. We'll be right back. had a great show. Thank you for joining us this morning on Operation American Dream. Don't forget the CMR program at Point Loma Nazarene University on November 3rd at 8 a.m. You can come and learn how to find the right veterans for the right job within your company. And if you need more information on that or you want to get involved with us, OperationAmericanDream.tv and on social media. We'll see you next time. <laughs>